What's going on, everybody? Ryan the Mighty Quinn here on the Cornerman underscore MMA. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Please feel free to comment below. Love the engagement we've had lately. A lot of good stuff. UFC 281. Wow. What a night. Uh, yesterday was a big day for me. Uh, I was uh, match. The first fight card that I match made was. Uh, Ended at like 9.30, 9.45 ish, right before the main card of the UFC. Uh, we had the UFC on in the background, but I really wasn't able to dedicate to watching until after the fight was done. Uh, AFL was the name of the card for those of you in Florida. Went great, and we have a really big card coming up at the end of uh, yeah, January 20th. Uh, we're doing a professional card at the Hard Rock Casino in Hollywood, Florida. Show up if you're there. Really looking forward to that one. We got some big names coming on the card. But let's get to why we're here, uh, UFC 281. Um, there's a couple of the fights that really stick out in the beginning. Um, Aaron Blanchfield over Molly McCann. I thought Aaron was going to win pretty handily that, that fight. Didn't think it was going to go exactly like that. Tough spot for Molly, fighting a grappler with sound striking. Um, almost in her hometown. You know, she's from Jersey. Molly's not back getting that home cooking across the pond in Liverpool. And uh, she's not... She there's a little bit more attention on Molly, being that Patty Pimblett's not above, you know, like kind of taking the uh, taking the heat of the credit, you know, not taking the heat of the attention. Um, so that was that was a real tough situation for Molly. Uh, she'll she'll be around, she'll be back. Uh, girl could box. Uh, Frankie Edgar, that really in that, you know, but he's uh, and he's hanging it up. Uh, thank you, Frank, for the wonderful career from all us MMA fans and fighters to aspire to be like you. That was, uh, you were so much fun to watch, man. Enjoy retirement. Uh, shooting up the card, uh, my man Dustin Poirier, wow. Beating up Michael Chandler, or I can't even say beating up. You know, that was back and forth, uh, especially that first round. And then you know, the, in, the, in the third round, a pullback like that. And I was upset about the back of the head strikes. I actually missed a lot of that fight. I, um, I started like going home, but then I, I tuned in uh, before I left out the door. I was trying to get home, but um, man, that was uh, that that was something, Dustin. And I uh, just, I thought that that fight, you know, if he can create the angles, he'll be okay. Michael still showed that he can get in his own range and throw those power shots, and he did. He wrestled a little bit too. But once Dustin gets your back, you know, I, I know Dustin's known for his striking and his boxing, and everyone loves seeing that. But he's a he's a pretty serious black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He has great uh, technique. He's got great, and his his back taking is really good. Uh, he's actually, he's come into, uh, when I was coaching the amateurs, he's come in and work with the kids and he showed some really good stuff uh, on the ground. So, you know, Dustin's dangerous everywhere, as we know, and I think he's going to get that title shot again. Really looking forward to that. Go get him, buddy. Um, going up the card, Wiley Jung versus Carla Esparza. That fight was not like Carla Esparza versus Rose Namahunas, right? Uh, that fight was a lot of fun to watch. I got home to watch that fight. And uh, that last scramble, man, you know, Carla, good, good for Carla for, for taking it to Wiley and trying to get those takedowns. You know, that was, uh, that's not easy to do against a stout fighter. You know, I don't think people realize how hard that is to go for that. Um, only critique I could say is, you know, it's something that I used to suffer. You really got to throw hands first, which is scary to do against the Wiley Zhang, but you got to get her to cover up. You got to get those, that guard up high. And once you do that, you can get the takedown, but now if you don't do that and you if you shoot just a a, a telegraph takedown, they're going to sprawl, and that's what led to the scramble, and that's what led to the submission. Uh, somebody said that <laughs> they heard Daniel Cormier say he didn't know that he could choke out you could choke out somebody from the back control like that or the crucifix position. Um, I I guess now you do. So yeah, good for Wiley, but main event. <laughs> Alex Pereira is just on another level, man, when it comes to that striking. He's he's so much fun to watch. Like I was you can look back at my last conversation with Glover Teixeira talking about when Alex came here. Like the last time I remember somebody with that buzz behind them was probably Brock Lesnar, but Glover also had that kind of buzz behind him, getting a title shot within his first five fights in the UFC. And uh, Alex delivered. It was you know, he um it it, it was just so much fun to watch. We're we're gonna break down how he does what he do in a minute, but I want to go back to, to Israel real fast, you know, hats off to him. 
kind of got into on social media with some people. I felt that was the best Israel Adesanya that we have ever seen. He wasn't, you know, for him to win that fight, I thought he had to keep it boring. And then I saw a lot of people say later on, like before the fight, yeah, he needs to do it boring. He needs to do it boring. And he kind of did. He kind of didn't. I thought that his his straight punches, his, his one twos, were so were so fast, so laser, like just just so linear that they were dangerous. And he was moving his head a little bit. And he showed a lot more, a lot more, like for lack of a better word, life in his in his step, a lot more pep in his step, just the movement, da, 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 wop, wop, you know, and that was the way to do it. <clears throat> he did catch on, you know, he did get caught on the side a few times. Um, and, and we're getting stalked down by Alex, which Alex is good at. I also thought it was really right for Izzy to, and especially in that first round, to snag one from the slow starter in Alex Pereira. Now, Alex is known for, you know, stalking, seeing what's available, you know, calculating, Izzy took advantage of that one round one and I, and and the end of the round, you know, when he hit that, that right hand, which led to the left hook, the left hook was totally clean. It's not when the hook lands, it's when he throws the hook that, that like before or after the clock and he threw the hook before the clock, it was totally clean. And that, that him rocking Alex there won him the round might've even saved Alex. But no, going into the, even though Alex won the second round, I was kind of like, man, I think Izzy might snag this. He was on, on his way to doing so. You know, I got some talking points here. Uh, oh yeah, he he mixed it up, mixed it up great with the uh, the wrestling. Well, both of them did. Bo- both of them showed wrestling. It was pretty crazy. Somebody texted me, "Is this gone versus uh, versus uh, uh, Francis?" <laughs> and um, but I did wonder, especially after that that third round, how to respond because those tight waist locks. Um, that the body lock and that that ground control. If you're not used to that in a fight, and then you got to stand back up and strike again, it takes a little off because all the blood's rushing to your arms and everything. Kind of fatigues you. I thought that he, I, I thought that he that that he recovered well, but it, I think it did affect him a little bit. Um, you know, he was he relied a lot more on his footwork in the later rounds after that with the one two than the one twos. Um, but yeah, let's get down to Alex, why he does what he does. Um, the sniper, as I was calling him, that's what he is. Like, yeah, he showed the slow start. He's got the nice high guard. Actually, his takedown defense looked pretty good for the most part. But, you know, he's just seeing what's open. And the way, like, when you see a lot of those tie boxers, when they throw those kicks, those those straight, those lead kicks, it's almost like a jab. His or kicks are not like that. His kicks had power. His kicks kicks were were moving Izzy's legs, were thudding on Izzy's legs when he was throwing them. They were scoring. And um, I thought that was what was winning him round one until he got rocked. Um, and even in rounds two and three. Round four, Alex kind of looked a little tired, but like those kicks are just something. They're fast. They're tough to come in on. It's really tough to gauge with those because, um, you know, once he's in range, he could throw those hooks. So I don't want to get ahead of myself. We'll talk about the kicks. So... And then, you know, Alex loves that that check hook. It's not really – well, he, he did it both, lead left hook and counter left hook, he, the looping right hands. Like, um, that's another thing that with a body type like Alex, he's so long and rangy, he could actually get inside and fight in a telephone booth, which is how the knockout happened and how one of his earlier scoring, round, uh, scoring happened in the second round. He can get in close and mix it up. Like bop bop those looping punches, those upper hook, those uppercuts, those right hooks, left hooks, which is amazing. He's able to do that so well because of the way he moves his body into his punches. That's another level of the knockout artist. You know, like just re- if you look like he's just the way he's able to sit on his hook so fast and throw, the way he's able to sit on his right hand, move his head, and respond after. He he did very well. Izzy was pretty good at putting a stop to this, but he still did it like. Alex answers. He finishes exchanges. You know, he doesn't. He doesn't just defend and move. He defends, and he throws one two. That's not always going to knock you out, but that's going to stop an opponent from throwing combinations on you, which kind of made Izzy think twice about opening up on him. Izzy did stay away from the spinning stuff for the most part. Great idea, you know. But Alex just he just takes weapons away from you like that against somebody who's looking to wrestle, which is now people are looking at is Alex's Achilles heel most likely it that's not easy to come in on and shoot on 
Okay, because you you know you're gonna catch some stuff on the way in, especially the fact that he can roll into those punches, getting his body in. Um, and he's so fast. He's clearly got some power. It's uh, it's really crazy. You know, um, I got some talking points here. Oh yeah, well, I mean we kind of no- mentioned this the uh, the cal- the calculativeness, the calculation. You know, he showed it against Sean Strickland too, and Bruno. You know, he's here, he's here, he's just waiting to see what's going on. He's waiting to see what's going on. And then, pop, pop. Um, like I said earlier, Izzy was smart to snag around from him while he was calculating. Thought that was a great move on Izzy's part. But Alex still made him pay. So what's next for the new champion? Um, I believe that Israel Adesanya will get an immediate rematch. Um, I think he deserves it, even though he's 0-3 against him. He's 0-1 in mixed martial arts, and Izzy's made his claim here in mixed martial arts as the man at 185. You know, obviously Alex is the champion. We all know that. We all respect that. But Izzy's gone, you know, he's even gone up in weight to challenge. You know, he's 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 owed he's owed a rematch. I thought Izzy uh the stoppage. Oh, we'll stop talking the stoppage. I thought he handled that well too. Um a lot of people, oh, that was an early stoppage. It was not an early stoppage. I uh, I count when I originally watched it, I counted uh, three or four unanswered strikes. I rewatched it this morning. There was actually fifteen unanswered looping strikes. I'm not talking jabs. I'm talking uppercuts, left hooks, and right hooks. That's fifteen power shots that were unanswered. Yeah, Izzy was lucid, but he didn't need to take much more. There was still enough time in the in the fight to get a vicious Alex Pereira knee, a vicious Alex Pereira kick. Not necessary. Mark Mark Goddard did a good job there. So. Yeah, let's talk about what's next a little bit more. I think that I think that Izzy gets that rematch. I would love to see it down here, FLA Live Arena in the spring. I, I hear the UFC is coming down here. Um, I, I just can't think anybody right now that has that has challenging ability for Alex Pereira. Now, I know I talk about this a lot too. Like you know, Alex got an MMA later, so it kind of forced him into being a specialty fighter. I know when a lot of people think of specialty fighters, they usually think of grapplers with like slick submissions, like an Alexi Olenek. But it happens a lot with you know you know wrestlers, like a Mark Madsen's a good example. Uh, when you get into the game a little bit later, and you need to stick with what got you there, you can't change your swing once you get to the major sort of. And Alex is just so devastating with his striking. It's just you know he he. he it, it forces him to be that specialty fighter. I'm, I'm like, I don't want to say he's too weak elsewhere, but uh, somebody with a wrestling prowess might be able to uh, might be able to capitalize on that. I just I can't think of anyone in the 185 pound division right now. You know, Bo Nichols working his way up, but I think it's going to be a little bit before he gets that level. Maybe a year. We'll see. You know, he's three fights, three fights in Bo Nichols, four fights. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll see there. Can't think, you know, Johnny Eblen's in, in Bellator, as I was talking with Matt Pignon before. So, you know, he's not going to be challenging for that anytime soon. You know, see what happens down the line. Uh, so let me know what you think. Other than Israel Adesanya, who do you think deserves to beat to fight Alex Pereira? And who do you think in the middleweight division would beat Alex Pereira? Um, that Shemaev comes to mind. Alex is pretty big, though. Uh, so... Let me know what you think, guys. Thanks again. Like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you next time.